I say, oh, sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, we come now on this beautiful rainy day in June to share a story. Now, I guess I have never actually said this before, but on these stories that I tell, I do change the names so nobody's uh, identities can be uh, compromised. But I uh, just want to say that. So, in other words, these stories are actually based on real events. Uh, so, Sam was a deadhead, a middle-aged deadhead. Now, for some of you who are younger, you probably don't even know what that means. Well, it's a reference to the Grateful Dead Band. A deadhead is someone who travels from concert to concert to concert, uh, basically being a groupie, a follower, of the Grateful Dead Band. And you know, back in the day, when I was younger, more actively involved in stuff, military, whatever, uh, the Grateful Dead were really, really popular. And actually, Grandpa R.T. was the religious uh, leader, the, uh, the holy man for the Grateful Dead Band. And, uh, so, you know, I've got some history with this particular band, but Sam, he, well, that's what he did. He was middle-aged, he, he uh, maybe a little younger, I mean, he's 40-ish, and he had his BW band, and he traveled from concert to concert, no strings attached, no commitments, no community. He lived off of making grilled sandwiches and soda, selling them to people at concerts to pay for his gas and his living. And so he basically was just getting by. And when needed, he would hold up somewhere and uh, uh, he'd do some other odd jobs, whatever he could find, uh, to get him by until the next concert. And this lifestyle of his also included bouncing from one relationship to another. And at, at some point in his uh, late 30s, early 40s, he got involved with dating a witch. And, you know, she was from up in the northwest area. And uh, I guess they were together for early, longer than usual. And uh, she, she started getting serious about their relationship, which is a reasonable thing. And apparently, Sam wasn't comfortable with serious. And so he decided one day just to load up his VW van and say goodbye. Got to go to the concert. And he took off. Well, right or wrong, good or bad, she got me. And because of being mad, she decided she wanted revenge. She had that retaliatory kind of nature, you know. Uh, so what she did was she apparently conjured a not quite so friendly spirit and put it on a mission to make it impossible for Sam to ever be in relationship with anyone else ever again. So as you can see from the story so far, she was pretty mixed. Well, that's when I found out about this story, you know. Uh, Sam wound up in Taos, New Mexico, where I was living at the time and doing my Indian religious stuff out there and had our community, community out there and still out there. And, and so uh, he came to me, uh, he, he'd come to ceremony a few times, cleansing, purification. He had been to other people trying to, trying to deal with this and he came to me one day to tell me his story. And and he laid it out there, and he said, what happened? 
and then you got a little more description. Apparently, you know, he liked, he liked living the New Age way. He liked, you know, partying, music, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, 70s and 80s and 90s. And so, uh, any time that Sam tried to have a girl over to wherever he was staying, something really disastrous would happen. For example, Sam told me about this one gal he got involved with and he took her back to his room. And they started uh, embracing their passion for one another. And the door flew open and slammed against the wall. Of course, that made him jump. And then the door slammed shut. And obviously nobody there. And that scared the bejeebies out of this young lady, and she ran. And Sam said, this has happened a lot. He said one time something flew across the room and shattered a big glass mirror. And another time, uh, the bed was shaking so hard that uh, the young lady would get up and run out of the room. And lights would come on and off. It, you know, nothing was physically harmful. But it scared the bejeebies out of everybody that Sam tried to get together with. And, uh, and he was terrified. He was scared. He thought it was going to get worse. And he was a dead man. And so he was desperate for help. Well, I sat with him, prayed on him, and said, OK, you know, we'll go for it. Got some people come in to help out and started the, started the ceremony to free him up. And uh, as soon as that prayer time started in that a sea ceremony, sweat lodge ceremony, you know, he went rigid in the back there. He went down like a fly being hit with a swatter. Laid out flat, and he was just panting and panting and panting. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And this went on for you know, 15, 20 minutes while we were doing the ceremony, and finally, boom. Release that bad spirit from him, sent it back on its way where it came from, all cleared up. And old Sam, boy, is he happy a camper, boy. Suddenly he was able to breathe and relax, and he felt good for the first time in a long time. And so Sam uh, got up, he was really grateful. We talked about, hey, you know, this is what it means to live in community, this is what it means to get that kind of help, to be in a good relationship. And I warned him, <laughs> boy did I warn him, that he better change his ways, take it to heart, that if it happened once, it could happen again, and maybe next time it'll be worse. I wish I could really say that it had a happy ending to it, but the fact is, when they're wrong, good or bad, a couple of weeks later, old Sam, he came out his VW van all loaded up. He said, man, I really am grateful, and I hear what you had to say, but there's a concert over it. Few states down the road, and I got to go. Sam was dead. He was on his way. The moral of the story is hell has no fury like a woman scorned. You better remember that. Walking beautiful.